well guys, about 15 miles off the beaten path, and here we are. Good morning, it is a chilly one at that. Letting the car warm up a little. Look at that sunrise on the mountain there. And right down there you can see snow on the mountain. It was a good night, no problems. But now we've got a long drive to find gas. We need propane, our 130 pound tank is done. And we're off to Moab for now. So, I'm gonna finish hooking up and hit the road. Not a bad view for breakfast and airing up your tires. Alright guys, we needed a little pee break, so we stopped here at Blue Mesa Reservoir and soon to be named Brown Sand Reservoir. But look how much the water has gone down. There's the boat launch, but you can see all the, uh, whatever, the different colors. Pretty crazy, pretty, pretty crazy. The world we live in now, droughts too much rain, storms, not enough storms, <laughs> all confusing. Alrighty guys, well, it's just a easy night tonight. I decided to pull into a KOA with the deluxe suite. It's our first time plugging in in five days, six days. But uh, we head to Moab tomorrow, so I figured I'm tired of driving, tired of worrying about where <laughs> everything is. So it's just nice to have a, a quick little rest for the night. So bright and early, we're gonna wake up. We're just cleaning out the car, all the snacks, all the crap that builds up, and then we'll be hitting the road and into the desert of Moab. Well, I hope you guys are enjoying this series so far. Obviously, this is video four in this series. If you haven't checked out those, be sure you check them out. And if you find this information helpful, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Now, we started off the video talking about that I need to get some propane because one of my tanks are empty. So the average temperature so far during this trip has been, let's say, about 30. It fluctuates to about 40 in the day and 18 at night, so maybe a bit less than 30. But overall, I find you get about three to five days, depending if there's wind. Wind is the biggest factor out of one 30 pound propane tank. Also, we're in such remote areas and nine times out of 10, something runs out on a Sunday. I like to start looking for somebody to fill my tank as soon as that first one's empty. That way I still have about three to five days in case I can't find anything near me. Now I've been traveling nonstop for the last five days. And if you saw my last video, it was pretty stressful to get to that Colorado location with the ice and snow on the mountain roads. And I just wanted to have a night of decompressing and have a place that I could dump, fill up my tanks, and then get propane. So that's why we pulled into a KOA. Now, if you're boondocking, some people are going to judge you, say, oh, you should boondock 24-7, or you should do this 24-7. Guys, do what you want. I disperse camp and boondock majority of the time, but every now and then it's nice not to worry about security, where you're going to dump, where you're going to fill up with water, and worry about your propane shortage. But guys, let's get back to the video and the most epic campsite I've stayed at so far on this trip. Well, guys, about, I'd say, 15, 8, eight to 15 miles off the beaten path. Pretty extreme off-roading for a camper, but I can't do justice with this camera, so I'm gonna throw in a bunch of drone footage of where we are.
Well guys, I don't know if you can see the colors here, but it's pretty epic. We got the moon rising. We got the pink sky in the background. Sitting enjoying the bonfire. Yeah, don't get this in Chicago, but also <laughs> if something happens to us right now, <laughs> we're in trouble. But anyways, look at that sky. You can't really tell here. Hopefully I have the time lapse going. Just watch the most epic colored sunset. Yeah, I guess you can tell a little bit. It's, I'd say, 10 times more vibrant. <laughs> it's actually pretty insane. Anyways, I'll check in with you guys tomorrow morning. peaceful night sleep last night unfortunately the moon was nearly filled so it lit up the sky so we couldn't see that many stars but uh, other than that no complaints one thing uh, it did get down to about 32 or 36 I don't use my tank heaters until it's like 20 or even less and then I have five tank heaters three fresh water gray and black there's really no reason to use the gray and black unless you're pumping out that morning. Um, but I pumped out yesterday morning and then I left those on by mistake. So it did drain about 10% of my, 15% well, of my battery last night. I should have just left it off, but I would have if I realized that. So something to keep in mind. Um, Cause yeah, really fresh water tank won't freeze when it's 30 or 25, unless you got this much water in. If the whole thing's full, you should be good for a good two days of it being that cold. But anyways, I am uh, all packed up and ready to go. The family is getting dressed. And then we're going to start the trek out of here. Nothing broke coming in. Knock on wood, nothing breaks leaving. But I should be able to get you some footage of us leaving. And hopefully everything goes smooth. Today we're heading to the arches to go see some arches. And then who knows where the rest takes us. guys halfway back to the main road decided to stop and uh, check this cliff out have a pee break because it is a long slow drive anyways hope you enjoyed the video check back with you in a bit well guys what do you think of that campsite absolutely loved it again found that from a buddy on instagram couple things i want to address from that previous clip i talked about tank heaters i have five tank heaters on my rv as well as I have plumbed a pipe into my basement area from my furnace. So my furnace, whenever it turns on, is pumping warm, hot air into the basement. I have added insulation on the basement, not the typical coroplast. I've got half inch insulation on the basement.
basement. So there is ambient warm air going down there as well. That's why I don't believe I need to use my tank heaters all the time. Also, as I mentioned in the video, the more full your tanks are, the less you need to worry about your tank heater. Although the more full your tanks are, the more things can break if you do let them freeze. So there's a happy medium between those two areas that you got to play with. And that just takes time and experience to figure out. Now, next up on the list, I talk about if anything happens to us, we're in real trouble. Most of the dispersed camping sites I stay at do not have cell phone service. So what I carry is something called a Garmin inReach. Firstly, it's another navigational tool, but the main reason I carry it is because it has satellite text messaging capabilities. So I check in with a couple of my family members every day before I leave and at night to make sure they know where I am. Also, there's a live tracker if let's say I didn't check in because I forgot or something happened they can just click on it and see where I am another thing the Garmin inReach has is an SOS function where if for instance I fell and broke my leg and then my wife couldn't unhook or do something with the camper the Garmin inReach would contact the local help and then would either drive out to me or send a helicopter now this thing isn't free it is costly first you got to buy the device then you got to pay for the monthly service to get that two-way text messaging and if you want there's an additional health insurance package I carry four health insurance packages because one for each one of my family but let's say something happened let's say God forbid my son broke his arm and we were in the middle of a remote area or I ran out of gas I could hit that button that would send help and all that transportation cost to the hospital would be covered by the insurance now rates change but there's a link down below if you're interested in doing this type of camping I highly recommend you get a Garmin inReach it is my lifeline to the rest of the world and it also gives me peace of mind in case something does happen and it also gives my family members at home peace of mind so I would highly recommend you get a Garmin inReach. Now last thing I want to address is the off-roading nature of taking a camper off-road. Now guys it's very crazy to capture the off-road nature of the roads on a camera. Now what you saw there were pretty rugged, but on camera it looks, you know, just like a couple pebbles on the road. Granted, it's not as crazy as a 4x4 trail, but it's definitely more crazy than anyone should take their stock RV. And there's a couple reasons for that. Most RV travel trailers have low hanging plumbing, and definitely I came within inches of uh, the frame of the RV, so I would have ripped out all of those things. But really, this is extreme off-road for a travel trailer it is light off-road for a regular 4x4 but it's definitely not recommended to go where I go without knowing something can get ripped off or if you've modified your travel trailer to make sure nothing can get ripped off now as mentioned in the video this was a 15 mile stretch off-road one way I believe and that took me about two two and a half hours so whenever you get your tires on a dirt road just times your travel time by like 10 because that's how slow you'll be traveling if you travel fast you'll break things also so it's not wise to travel fast with all of this weight off-road on loose gravel so just take your time most of the time I travel just in regular 4x4 but on those times I had to climb up some rocks I did go in 4x4 low one thing I do stress to make sure there's no extra bouncing in both the car and the travel trailer is air down your tires I've mentioned this before I'll put a link down below for a video that I talk about airing down your tires but basically I go to about 35 psi in my SUV 25 psi in the travel trailer and then the additional thing I have is that hitch that you see on the back of my car that is a shocker hitch that is a suspension hitch that helps reduce the bounce from the camper to the car and vice versa well guys that's all I'm gonna have for today be sure you like subscribe if you want to see more of this adventure because this is only day 8 of our 21 day adventure so thanks a lot for tuning in and until next time I'll see you then